think like everything else, you also have to kind of look at the person. How do they respond yes. to alcohol? Do they feel, you know, gross the next day? Uh, that could also be a sign that your liver is starting to get congested if you're having that kind of hangover feeling with a small amount of alcohol, uh, that your liver needs a, a, a dry month or a dry year even to give it a break, or if you're feeling fatigued and bloated. So I don't know about you, Tanya, but um, the past couple of weeks, it's spring and people come in seeing me saying, oh my goodness, I'm so tired. I feel yucky and maybe I want to do a liver cleanse or something like that. Are you getting this at all? And I would love to, we, we should talk about this. Yeah. I would say more the other way around and patients are coming in and saying they're sick or they're tired or feeling nauseous, they can't get out of bed. And and then I'm saying maybe that you could tell liver cleanse. <laughs> you know, let's let's figure this out. Uh, sometimes patients will come in and say, you know, I was told after go doing a general workup that um, everything's perfect on my blood, but you know, the liver enzymes are a little elevated, and then that's it, and it's dismissed. And you know, we'll just monitor it, or or they'll you know secondary to that maybe find an ultrasound that they've been you know shown to it's showing. Uh, fatty liver and the patients don't understand what that means and how much it can impact them symptom-wise uh, because it's sometimes the beginning of something else like a, you know, a non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, which is like a fancy word for the beginnings of liver disease. And it's something we, I don't want to alarm anybody, but it's a very emerging condition uh, with the increased incidence of pre-diabetes and type 2 diabetes. And I feel like the, the most common kind of symptom along with finding those things on on uh, ultrasound or, you know, those minor liver enzyme elevations is like the tired feeling and the bloating and then the sudden like waking, you're eating the same foods and suddenly your weight goes up. So then are you saying that if you're feeling crappy like that, maybe <laughs> it's a good idea to go get your blood test to see if there is you know, high cholesterol or fatty, um, you know, fatty liver. liver enzymes yes. and, and check for fatty liver just in case. Yeah, it may not be yeah. that, but, you know, check that out. For sure. If you are finding that you're feeling like you need to binge eat or you're constantly tired, you may even have like upper pain, uh, pain in the upper abdomen. Um, you might be having creeping blood pressure, just slightly elevations in that or been told your cholesterol is high could be that, you know, your liver's having a hard time dealing with cholesterol and triglycerides. So it's dumping and right. it's, uh, it's the liver that you need to address, not just take a medication to drop your cholesterol. That's great. And, you know, I'm also conscientious of people that are listening to the podcast because you directed your hand to the right side, basically by your right area, the ribs. So yes. and that's literally where the liver is. It's on the right hand side just underneath the ribs or sorry, within the ribs. And mm -hmm. technically, if you if your liver is enlarged, it goes underneath the ribs. Yeah, it can go bigger Wait, than below 12 centimeters. Oh, whoa, yeah, and you can feel it. And some people will have a gallbladder sludge that could also be a sign. And that's a little more painful where the gallbladder kind of is filling up with that, you know, um, bile it's getting congested and um, it's not stones it's like micro stones like sludge and that can be painful passing those that sludge or if a stone is building and it gets blocked that can definitely cause that pain in the upper right yes. abdomen but I'm talking more of like a generalized ache and you know not necessarily uh, specifically like, to be honest some people like a lot of ache people with uh, liver conditions are asymptomatic but some people are very in tune with their body or they're just super tired and they have this generalized ache. I remember, interesting enough, a, a patient years ago, fascinating, just came to me. He had um, along the liver meridian in his legs and he just pointed to it. And then as he traced his liver meridian all the way up to his liver and uh, he said, I had this constant pain and like ache in this area. And it didn't make any sense until we did like a nutrition evaluation and he was about having five beers a day. And uh, so, sorry, five, you know, five beers a day, five beer, yeah, five right. beers, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, so then we, we need to add in just recently, was it this year or last year that even Health Canada 
is saying a, an acceptable amount of alcohol is literally one drink a week. Right. And then they think there's no safe too much. drink. So yeah, it's a fun little poison once in a while. <laughs> yeah. I kind of don't even think one is, you know, like on a regular basis. I don't think that uh, would be advisable. I think the liquor companies like to do as much research as they can and they've got lots of money to then say, okay, a little alcohol is okay and it's good for you and wine is good for you. And I think it's more just like enjoy it as a little fun with tasting your food, your steak or your salmon and like pair your your meats and such. But um, with an alcoholic beverage once in a while for flavoring and enjoyment, but not as a regular thing. Um, and so then let's... On the sorry, I, I, just better. to be clear so people will understand, well, why is one drink a week on the regular not advisable from a health point of view. Oh, did they say one drink a week or one drink they, a they day? Said, no, no, no. They said one drink a week oh, is okay. okay. Right, 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 right. Right. Yeah. So they well, they're saying sense. that there, there's not as much uh, there's not much of a health risk if uh-huh. you have one drink a week. But anything above one drink, they're they're saying. Like, I think it goes into the yellow area, right? So like one drink a week is considered green. So it's like go but then two drinks to i forget five drinks is considered like yellow don't quote me on that though and then you hit the red zone it's like you know anything above five a, a, a week is like no don't do it giant health risks right i think like everything else you also have to kind of look at the person how do they respond yes. to alcohol do they feel you know gross the next day uh, that could also be a sign that your liver is starting to get congested if you're having that kind of hangover feeling with a small amount of alcohol, uh, that your liver needs a, a a dry month or a dry year even to give it a break, or if you're feeling fatigued and bloated. If you're one a person who works out a lot, and eats super clean, and amazing BMI, and like a, a amazing weight on their frame and healthy fat percentage, and they're having a drink here and there and there's no response to it uh, that could be you know when, when they're looking at their diet it could be like sometimes selecting that you know instead of some other carbohydrate if they're being like you know what i mean like it, it's like all variable in terms of how much um although they said that previously it was like one drink a day for women and two drinks per day for men when safe and now they're saying one drink per week. That's huge. What a that difference. Big shift. Big shift. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know about you, but, you know, we're both, um, I'm over 50, you're over 40. And certainly if I have a drink, I, I don't tolerate alcohol at the best of times. But with age, I feel that it's even, I have a less capacity. And okay. I certainly hear that from my patients. I don't know if you yourself experience that. I went without alcohol for the year. I don't know why I decided to do that. I just oh. was like, I'm going to go dry for a year. So I wow. did. And then at Christmas time, I had a glass or two. It just didn't interest me how much it was okay. But I think because of COVID, you know how like everyone's having a little more alcohol over COVID? I was having a little more alcohol too. And oh. then uh, I was like, you know what? What am I doing? I don't need this. And so I cut it out. And I feel far better without it. I feel like my exercise is better. I don't feel hungover by drinking it but because I was having a little more I think my body's liver was like yeah no I don't like you <laughs> don't do that right. anymore and the next day workouts were a little compromised not that I was drinking excessive or anything like it was one or two once in a while but more than I normally would have drunk and I think a lot of people reported that okay so then let's go straight into you know the meat of what they can do so we mentioned um or you mentioned about liver what does liver detox look like so what are you know top three things five things that one can do it's spring you know we want to be vital and energetic it's getting sunnier and you don't want to like be slogging it through if if you're feeling super exhausted then a big nutrition change would make uh, an amazing difference as a starting point, however, it's not the easiest thing to do. You might not have the energy to do that. So I would scale back and say, okay, maybe do um, like look at rejuvenating. So really protecting your sleep first, looking at what are your what's your sleep hygiene like, time are you going to bed, scaling back the hours that you are going to sleep. Look at the time of liver. So maybe you can share what time is 
liver time in Chinese medicine, knowing that there's this Chinese medicine clock when the liver is most likely to restore. So itself. this is a great question. And we can look at the time of the liver in two ways. Seasonally, this is the time of liver. Springtime is the high point, the high life of liver and gallbladder in Chinese medicine. And what that means is if there's any compromise, this is also the time it shows up even more. And yet this is also the time where we can really do more for it because what happens is when the liver gets all clogged up in Chinese medicine, we call it liver chi stagnation. And how that shows up is like, you can be more tired, you can be more irritable, grumpy, angry, moody, um, and you can have insomnia, you have bloated because in Chinese medicine again, and we know physiologically the, uh, the liver is a detoxifying organ. So if it's compromised, it can start to overact on your digestive tract. So we say the liver can overact on the spleen and stomach. So really, this is a great time to detox it. So then it'll give everything else, all the other organs a break and be able to do what is necessary to keep going and be vital and energetic, as I've mentioned. And so uh, you mentioned dietary. Uh, so springtime. So springtime, you're saying, is like the time, but then also sleeping daily. Yes. Earlier. Yes. It cause... impacts the liver. Yes. Thank you for that, too, because then there is so the, it's the seasonal time and then there is the circadian rhythm within a 24 hour period the certain organ systems are at its peak at certain times of the day so for the liver gallbladder it's it can be working hard or um at like a, between 11 and 1 and you don't really want to be trying to sleep at that point after that because when your body is then trying to detoxify at that time, it may activate your thinking and may activate your body. So really and ideally for sleep, you want to sleep before 11 p.m. at night. Right. And at the very least, don't go past 1 a.m. into gallbladder time when decisions are being made. Apparently decisions are a big deal with the gallbladder. And so then you're just like can't sleep at all. And then when you finally do fall asleep, you're restless because your brain yes. is trying to figure things out. So the best time to fall asleep would be before liver time. And what was, what was the time in Chinese medicine? Was the time just before liver time? Is it just like the, is it like mm. heart or, or not heart? No, no it's, it's not, not heart. Triple, heart. Triple burner, triple burner time or? You know what? Like right in the second. Oh my gosh. I'm forgetting. I'm having like my, my, Oh, my senior moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, I need a liver detox right this minute, apparently. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, the ideal is to fall asleep in a time where your mind is calm and that your liver can re restore itself. So you feel less irritable. You can wake up uh, not feeling exhausted the next morning. And then I would look to get some acupuncture or do ac and or do acupressure puncture points, uh, pressure points, sorry, at home. So that you can uh, revitalize, rejuvenate, like do things more that are going to help you restore some energy, like easing into it. So the spring isn't one of those times you're going to be like, okay, I'm going to run a marathon and I'm just going to go, you know, like jump into, you know, fasting and like a rapid change um, because you might not have the energy to like, let's say, make the, the do the food prep for a big nutrition change. If you or someone who's used to it and has done it before, this is an excellent time. Um, if it's not, you can do some basic changes with food, like just removing, uh, you know, and we can go to, into more detail in a future episode, but just removing processed foods would make a huge difference. So pastries and sugars, and uh, obviously taking out alcohol, cutting back on caffeine, which is a stimulant. Like even though you think, oh, I'm so tired, I need more coffee, the liver has to process the caffeine and so it might make you feel more tired and do nothing for you so like it, i would start by taking out the things that are going to make you ultimately more tired like i said processed foods and sugar caffeine and alcohol start with that protecting your sleep and doing acupuncture and acupressure then moving into a bigger nutrition um you know liver detox which you can go into more detail in a future episode and perhaps you could share some of the acupressure points you could do at home and then what an acupuncture 
session would look like and why that would be helpful. Yeah, so going back to the circadian rhythm, uh, you're 100% right, by the way, <laughs> when I had that little moment. San Zhao, uh, we call it triple heater or triple burner, is what is between 9 and 11 at night. And that is a great time to calm and um, settle down to get into a restful sleep. So it's time. It's a time that helps to kick off the regulatory function and the repair function of the body, which takes place at night. So it's really great to do that before we get into that liver time, gallbladder time. Actually, the 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. is actually the the gallbladder, and then 1 a.m. to 3 p. a.m. is the liver time. Right. Oh, so, oh, so it starts with gallbladder and then liver. Oh, interesting. So even yeah, more of a reason. Don't call. Try to ball sleep when your body, your brain is trying to make decisions between. That's eleven to one is gallbladder. Eleven time. to one is Urgh. gallbladder time, and it's like, it's true. Right. It, we say it's the energetics of it is that it's in charge of decision making. So if there's things that are left undone and you're just lying in bed, then. Obviously, a lot of people do sleep at um, 11 p.m. or past it. So if you're in that predicament, it's you're not going to beat yourself up and say, oh, I wish I no. went to bed before 11. But when you're in it, it's like then if there's lots of stuff in your brain, this is where you do need to do the brain dump, whether it's right. like writing it, journaling it. Journaling, yeah. Or putting your phone down or not trying to, you know, make lists, like maybe talk to a Google phone or a Alex. Yeah. Tell it. Tell it your list of things because you don't open the phone and like squash your melatonin production. Yeah. Um, and acupressure points. What acupressure points could you do or calming points could you do if you're like stuck because you're like sitting there and going like, you know, the whole wheel, hamster wheel in your brain? Yeah. You know, that's really great. I was prepared to do something very liver gallbladder related. Uh, okay. But, you know, if you're actually lying there trying to sleep, I think it's always going back to calming the heart, calming the shen. So, and, and it's easily accessible because even though, you know, I would love to show people the four gates, which I'll do another time, I okay. think we got to go back to the basics and simple simplicity is best. So calming, which I still love, and I call it AccuTox because the whole, it's like people do Botox right between the brows here. Oh, right? AccuTox. Right. So, you know, you can... And, and with gravity, um, we want to do anti-gravity because our skin starts to pull down as we age. So we want to actually either press the point directly between the brows or, you know, even upward or circular motion. And Probably the other get thing, less uh, frown lines that way. <laughs> well, and you know what? Right? In Chinese face reading, those frown lines, so it was very typical to have one in the middle or okay. the 11s on the side. Right, yeah. See, yeah. when you when you <laughs> frown, when you did that squishy thing with the yeah, it's the, an eleven. Brows, it's an eleven. I get the elevens yeah. much more readily. Some people is very like deep rooted um, line in the middle. You, you've probably seen that, right? I, my brother has it. <laughs> I still get one yeah, big one in the middle. That's <laughs> okay. The one. Yeah, it's a reality. <laughs> it's a fact. We keep an eye back. Yes, right. It's definitely the three of us, my, my siblings, we have it. Yeah. Well, and and this, by the way, it's a reflection of the liver. So what you know, the more the line is there, and it also it's like you know, it, one one thing that I've learned is like when you start getting these lines, like for me, it's like oh my my anger is starting to come out now. Yeah. I, I used to like totally be retentive, like you know, I'm very quiet and super nice. Not that I'm not nice, but. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like as I'm aging, I'm I'm able to get it out more, and then then it shows through these lines, no. right? So uh, to go back to how you press it, so you could do the one finger deal. Sometimes I even put my index finger like so, um, just on the point, and I lean on it. So you don't even have to do much. It's just you know when you're lying and sleeping like that, right? And then another thing to do if you're just lying on your back is uh, using your index fingers and you do like a windshield wiper move and just from the midline and you cross over your brows and it feels really lovely too and again for those of us that are concerned which is many like we all want to look and feel good so this helps us 
look more refreshed and rejuvenated. So it's just a nice exercise to do. So it's about liver detox. It's about calming the spirits and looking good. <laughs> and it feels good, right? And then you do this and you can breathe. And literally, you just need to do it two minutes at a time. And you'll feel calmer and it'll help you go to sleep. And if you find yourself even during the day a little frantic, it's a point that you can do just even at your desk or, you, you know, if you're commuting on the subway, you can literally sit down and do that. Nobody cares. They're all consumed with their own devices. <laughs> so it's great to do something like that. And if a patient came in for acupuncture, would you recommend something two times per week for a few weeks to really help their them regain their energy? partly by, you know, reducing cortisol and stress hormones, but then you're also improving circulation to, let's say, liver 13 or, or are you doing like back shoot points for the liver? Like what would it look like? Oh, that's really like great. Very... So it would completely vary because, <laughs> you know, where's that depletion coming from? Some people are depleted because literally they had the gas pedal on and the brakes at the same time. So they're working so inefficiently that they're exhausted. But what's underneath might be that there is enough energy. So if they have a lots of energy, but it's just tied up, all we need to do is literally open up the floodgates. And so that's where, you know, the, the four gates treatment can come in, which is literally between the index and thumb and between the big toe and the little toe. And I'll show that another time. But if the person is coming depleted with a true depletion where they need to be nourished and tonified, then these are other points. So a great point uh, to Sanli, which is called three leg miles. And in the name, it actually, um, it means that if you're on your last leg and you can barely move another step, it provides and taps into the energy that allows you to freely move and have more energy to carry you through those three extra miles. Right. Nice. Yeah, so you can do that with acupuncture, which is really amazing. And um, again, depending on each individually, I would say, you know, if we're looking at it from a therapeutic standpoint, you would want to do it consecutively. It can be once a week or twice a week, depending on the severity level for, you know, four to eight weeks. And then thereafter, it's more like, you know, people have to fill the car with gas so that they can drive. So why wouldn't we want to be regular and get tune-ups and refill your fuel or get, refill your gas on a regular, right? I know I do it on the regular and of, of course I'm biased because I'm a practitioner, but certainly we've seen lots of our patients, they learn about this and they do the you know thera treatment, therapeutic treatment first. And don't I have some patients literally almost for 30 years because of that. They just see that it's a part of a lifestyle. So really acupuncture is part of the lifestyle, part of a way to thrive. So the combination of winding back the clock, so doing more restorative acupuncture, and then taking out sugar and stimulants and processed foods like pastries, it's a great place to start. And then in our next episode, we're going to talk more in detail about what a uh, uh, full kind of liver uh, tune-up might look like in terms of uh, nutrition and detoxification. So thank you so much for joining us. And I hope you got something, we hope that you got something really great out of this and share it because your family and friends, they deserve to learn about this. And um, there is research around this. Oh, you mentioned this earlier before we came on the show about how... Um, you know, Chinese right. medicine has been talking about this forever, but now there's new research around yeah. how to work with this. And well, it's, it's funny because they, they say, you know, oh, there's, um, well, in Chinese medicine, they've been saying it for years when you have liver cheese stagnation, which is when the, the energy is wired up that you might have depression and, and uh, anxiety. And it's because your liver needs support and work um, or, or a break from things. And, uh, we're, and now they're actually kind of coming up with this association literature that there's like a bi-directional kind of connection between depression, anxiety, chronic stress, and fatty liver. So if you have fatty liver or liver conditions, you might feel all those things and then chronic stress might make it worse. So that bi-directional kind of association. 
Yeah. So, uh, and I love that because this is all about, art. which is great, right? So it's like science and art and science. Yeah. And, and so it's all about the integration of, between Eastern and Western medicine, because not one system is, well, people argue, one system is superior than the other, but we say, you know, depending on the time and place, really it's ability about using both and choosing both.